Okay, folks, well done, welcome. You've made it to the last session for our first day of the conference proper, so good on you. Deserve a pat on the back just for that, so that's well done. I'd, I have great pleasure in interest, introducing you for this session, Rosie. Please make her feel welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, I did have a, a much longer talk uh, prepared for this afternoon, but then when I tested it, I, I was actually going to go over um, data ethics and privacy and the, plan, the government's plans um, for open data going forward. But then when I tested it, I realised that a uh, session late in the afternoon, um, I think people just uh, don't want to have too much new information um, thrown at them. So uh, my presentation is actually quite short and, and it focuses on, on the project um, and tells people a bit about myself. So firstly, I'd like to thank the organisers for putting together uh, the event and inviting me to speak. It's actually my first uh, Linux conference and I consider it an honour to be here. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, osgov.info. I launched this project uh, just a week ago. In the first week, it's received over 10,000 hits from more than 2,500 unique visitors. And this is while I've been uh, basically busy preparing for this conference, so I've done very little to uh, promote it because because promoting it means I get feedback, which I have to deal with, and um, I haven't really had time to do that. So, um, so it's not a project that you can put together in a, in a weekend, though. It's actually the, cu the culmination of several years of unpaid uh, work that I've done with Open Data. Over the last half dozen years, I've created uh, multiple financial transparency projects using Open Data. Uh, many have been featured as uh, use cases on data.gov.au when they've been public, when they've been online. Um, my original budget project, transparency project, played a significant role in the opening of the Commonwealth budget data and has received national and international recognition uh, from both experts and it's had some media. Uh, so my budget transparency project uh, was actually my first ever, a PHP and MySQL project back in 2012. Uh, I wanted to teach myself database programming and so I needed some data that I could work with uh, and uh, create projects around. And this is when I discovered open data and began looking around for some uh, data sets that I could use. I came across an old GovHack project that had been put together over a weekend at a hackathon. Um, the team had scraped about half the data in the federal budget and put it in a, a starburst uh, visualisation using uh, Mike Bostock's D3 code. Uh, the reason they'd scraped this data is because at that point there was no machine readable version of, uh, of the federal budget. It was only Word docs and PDFs. So playing with the GovHack entry, I realised I wanted uh, more from the data than the, that project could give me at that time. I wanted to be able to search in total across the entire budget. Um, and I wanted to be able to rearrange the data in different ways so that I could better interrogate it. I've got a degree in sociology and I've got a strong interest in inequality. And I wanted to see if the things I'd heard about government spending were true. Traditionally, people with an interest in government spending would have to go through nearly 20 PDFs uh, and manually identify and total uh, spending across all of those uh, PDFs. So being, having the budget uh, searchable and uh, in, the way, in this way uh, in a database is a big, was a big step forward for budget transparency. So I copied and pasted those 20 PDFs working all day, every day, over a couple of weeks, and I created the first ever line item CSV of, of the federal budget. Back then there were over 2,000 line item components, and since then the government has been reducing this number, and now there's about half as many, I think. The data that was originally scraped for the uh, GovHack project and inspired me only broke the data down to program level. But these programs contain subparts uh, called components and when searching across the budget, I wanted my SQL queries to be able to grab onto all of the information I could get to make them as sensitive and comprehensive as possible. In the lead up to the release of the 2014 budget, I was asked to provide my table to the Department of Finance so that they could use 
my schema of the line item in the line item CSV they released for the first time that year. With the 2014 federal budget, each of the approximately 150 Commonwealth agencies began publishing their finance and program information in individual Excel files with the data spread over different sheets. So without that line item CSV that uh, the government decided to uh, publish in addition to those, to the rest of them, uh, we would be left, developers would be left dealing with the Excel files and, um, and that's not, um, not very practical. The data that everybody wants to have analysed and presented on budget night itself, it's very important that this data is published in a format that doesn't require a lot of preparation. Scraping the 17 budget portfolio statement PDFs is actually quite difficult because the format varies from one to the next. And when scripts break, it introduces a lot of errors into the data. This is probably what happened with the 2017-18 data published in May last year. A couple of weeks after it was put out, I wasn't working with it at the time. I've just done this project more recently. I noticed it had only about a third of the data it should have had in the budget, in the uh, CSV. Um, but once I got onto the government and alerted them to this, they fairly quickly fixed it. It's really important for all of, the da all of that data to actually um, be, in the, be in the file, not have it, any of it missing. So the budget data tell us, tells us the total of spending for the current year, the last year, and three forward years. This can change during the year, and when it does, the agency that administers the pro that program reports it online and in December each year, these changes are collated by Treasury and presented as a mid-year fiscal update, or MyEFO for short. Ironically, as MyEFO is presented only in HTML and PDF, it is not broken down to, and is not broken down to program and component name, it can't easily be added to the existing budget data published in the previous May. For the first couple of years, I worked exclusively with the federal budget data, but I began wondering whether there was other data out there that I could integrate with the budget so that I could give people not only what was being spent and why, uh, but who it is that ends up with the grants and tenders paid for through budget programs. Initially, I was told, uh, not necessarily by government, by somebody, uh, that this data didn't exist, but I wasn't willing to accept that. And uh, I was looking around and I found out that one of the largest agencies that provide grants, which is social services, had been publishing their grants online for several years. In 2013, online grant reporting was made mandatory within a fortnight of decisions being made, but until this year, there was no central place that agencies would post these to. So it was a matter of uh, finding all of the agencies and downloading the grants from each site. Grants data varied from agency to agency in schema and format and quality, and the quality also varies widely. From 2018, all Commonwealth agencies must now publish the recipients of each grant along with the program, agency, and where the money is being spent uh, at a new portal called grants.gov.au. Grants historical grants data will probably uh, remain difficult to find and work with. In contrast to grants reporting, Commonwealth tenders from all agencies have been reported at a central site for many years. I decided to start working with tenders and grants data in mid-2015, uh, I think it was, um, when I was given a new enterprise incentive scheme funding to try to find a business model for the important work that I do. It was during this period that I began to integrate data across multiple data sets, including the budget, grants, tenders, ACNC, that's the um, Australian Charities and Not-for-Profit Commission, um, data. I'd also created projects along the way using parliamentary entitlements and political donations data, I think I even used uh, pecuniary interest data at one stage when there was a data set available. Um, so over the years I've gained experience in most data sets that have a bearing on financial and political transparency. So despite the work that I've done and the expertise I've developed as a single person on my own working in poverty, um, I couldn't get my projects off the ground financially. And uh, after uh, about a year of, of just uh, working really hard and not getting very far financially, I realised it would probably do me some good to, to have a break. It was at this time that the government announced that the ABS intended to use the 2016 census to demand information from the public that they needed to join all our administrative data 
from all the agencies into a single project. Because I had been aware of the governance rules that apply, that apply to administrative data, I understood what the government was doing was not sanctioned for good reasons by the existing legal framework. So I played a big role in the census fail campaign, including, uh, including creating a large submission, which was referenced twice in the final uh, inquiry report. And, saw, and also I got a mention from Scott Ludlam in Parliament. This all led me to becoming not just an advocate for accountability and transparency, but also a privacy advocate. And I'm now on the policy team in Electronic Frontiers Australia, which is a civil society organisation that was established back in 1994 or 1993, and is very active in debates on privacy and ethics in technology. It wasn't until I started getting ready for this talk today that I decided to re-engineer the old financial transparency prototype I'd left online and expand and transform it into the project I'll present today. All of the work you see, which amounts to 20 megabytes of code accessing nearly 80 databases, has been done in the last month. Uh, it's been a big job to get it done for this talk and I'm going to turn to the project now and give a broad overview of how to use it and the information it provides. To understand how money flows to and from the government, it's useful to have a grasp of the structure of the budget. That's why I like to use the budget data, because it forms a logic against which I can slot in other data sets. A simple way to conceptualise budget data is as a set of Russian dolls. That's how I like to think of it. The biggest of these dolls is the portfolios, which are, which are headed up by the ministry. There are around 17 portfolios each year, and those portfolios administer several each of them administers several agencies. Each of those agencies is responsible for implementing one or more programs through which they deliver government services and regulate society. There are about 150 agencies in the Commonwealth government and they group the programs they administer into outcomes or goals for the purpose of reporting. Each program contributes to a single outcome and these programs can be further split up into components, which is the smallest financial grain in the budget. At this point, it's important to understand that no money gets spent by a government agency unless it has been consented to for that purpose. The budget contains the main appropriation bills which must be passed through the House of Representatives and the Senate before any budget data can be published. This is why budget data is not made available until after the Treasurer's speech on budget night and after the bills have gone through the Senate. One of the things my project provides is to give people context for the sea of figures that constitute the budget. If you think about it, when the government makes a spending announcement, we are told that so many dollars are being spent um, on this road or that school. But very few people are familiar with the total budget spend uh, to know whether or not this is a lot of money or a small amount relative to the total budget. We often read claims that certain programs are a waste of money, but, but very few people have the information at their fingers uh, to know if these claims are true or if they're baseless. OzGov.info lets you drive your own totals within the budget rather than taking a passive role allotted to us by government-controlled media announcements. And the easiest way for uh, the uninitiated to query the data is to use a keyword search at the top of the page, the home page. This query matches against portfolio agency, program and component names, as well as the outcomes or goal statements that each agency uses as their basis for the reporting framework. The overview provides matches not just from the budget data in a particular year, but also across grants and tenders. So here's an example. So I put, put in the term uh, compensation, which I found quite interesting because it actually has a lot of results in the budget. Um, so I've provided the, um, the total of, that, of all those components plus the um, percentage of the total budget. So you get an understanding, you get some context for, context for the figures so you know if it's a lot of money, comparatively speaking, or it's not. You can also get uh, tenders and grants results for the same term. Here's an example of the, uh, this, is the comp this is the budget data results. So you've got portfolio, agency program, component name, and your outcome now. Plus you've got your five years of spending. 
It's the last year, the current year. Um, and three forward years. I'm going to talk about the concepts of top-down and bottom-up data now. I think of the budget as top-down data because it shows what is being spent and why. And I think of grants and tenders data, which is created from the information supplied by program applicants as bottom-up data. The programs that are listed in the budget every year are the same programs that organisations are awarded grants and tenders under. So this is how we join up the top-down top data with the bottom-up data. I'll now turn my attention to these budget programs and explain how I try to provide context for understanding uh, the figures in the budget in a way that is meaningful to users. When I applied my first ever MySQL query to the budget data by summing the program totals and then listing them by size, I was really interested to learn that welfare payments are among the top expenses for the government and that the age pension is by far the largest of these programs. This is primarily due to the huge demographic changes that have begun to impact on our tiny population. Australia is beginning to see the financial consequences of the increasing gap between the number of people of working age and the number of people who are no longer of an age where they can work. While working age income support payment numbers are relatively stable, that's New Start, Disability and Carer Payments, there's a demographic evolution of our country that is shaping one of the major economic challenges the budget will face going forward. It became obvious to me that we will need to grow the pie in order to meet the needs of welfare into the future. And bringing transparency to the revenue side of the equation is an important function in providing context to the budget data. The ATO began publishing tax transparency data in 2013. This is also what I call bottom-up data and is information provided to the ATO from top earning companies on their total income taxable income and tax payable. If Australia is going to face the economic challenges of the future, it is going to have to have a look, is going to have to look at getting multinationals to pay tax in the countries in which they earn their profits. The recipients project page in my project shows data for the top earning corporations on the ATO tra tax transparency list and I have matched this with political donors, Commonwealth tenders and registered charities data. So this is an, an example of the overview from the recipients page. And you can see there's a lot of, a lot of results there. There's a lot, of, a lot of data sets are coming together, integrated to, so that you can find out information from all those different data sets at the same time on the same entity. The electorates page breaks down Commonwealth tenders and grants by federal electorate. You can see which electorates contain the organisations who were awarded the most in government tenders. The electorate page also prov provides results for the donations and government grants received by charities in each electorate. So what's this? Okay, so I've done a, a, um, a join here with the um, and Commonwealth tenders data and the ATO tax transparency list so people can see uh, the tax information for, uh, for um, suppliers who have received um, Commonwealth tenders. And lastly, the locality page breaks down tenders, charities and grants, if the project continues, by postcode and suburb. Um, the reason I can't break it down at the moment is the, the grants information I have is actually just totals uh, for each charity that they um, give the, a, the um, a, ACNC. So they don't actually have to provide any information about which government agency uh, has provided the grant or uh, which level of government or how many grants. So, there's, so uh, there is that grant data out there that's provided um, by the different agencies, but that's a big job to collate all that, which is why, and I didn't get it done before this um, talk today. Yeah, so the charities information provides a total of government grants and donations they have received, um, 
And you can drill down further by clicking on the links in each page, just mouse over the tables. And in the project, if you see anything that um, is an orange link, you can click on it and find out more information. As you can see, there's a lot of information and multiple data sets now available at osgov.info. If I get enough financial support to continue with this project, I'll add the Commonwealth grants, which, is, which I haven't had time to do so far. If you'd like to support um, me or suggest that other people do, you can provide a one-off donation at, at the link provided there or a monthly donation, any amount of your choosing at Patreon. I do have a few supporters, but I certainly could do with a few more. Um, so thank you for your attention today. Um, if you want to contact me, you can um, hit me up on Twitter or email me at workshops at rosiewilliams.com.au. Thank you, Rosie. It's lovely to see when some of these projects actually get picked up and taken a little bit further as well from um, hackathons. Does anyone else have any, anyone have any questions for Rosie? Uh, thanks for that. Overall, do you have an idea of how much money is not being reported? Like the, the, the difference between total money going in, total money going out, and, and that where would, that information is missing? That would be... Uh, uh, a great overall goal. But this is, I mean, I've just taken this so far from where it started in the beginning. There was no, there was no budget data, so federal budget data and no budget transparency projects. So, and most, I didn't mention, but most of these data sets have only started being published in the last few years. And that's, and so some of them are not even available for some years. So they either hadn't started then or uh, they take, um, uh, for example, um, political donations and, um, uh, there's another one that I can't remember. Uh, for example, they don't come out till uh, seven months after the end of the financial year. So um, in trying to move things forward, it's, it's um, a very slow process, basically. And while that's an ideal that, and a figure that everybody wants to know, um, just getting to where we are has, has been, uh, you know, a, a massive effort and a long-term investment, basically. Um, thank you for that. Um, do you have any... Um, or seen any details of things like licensing fees? In the, are they included in the budget at all, as opposed to another way of money comes into the government services? So what kind of licensing? Uh, APRA, um, oh, sorry, ACMA, like radio licenses or, or um, serv serv government, government, sorry, government services. Sources of, sources of revenue, you mean? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so they're reported separately, but they're only given in a, just in a pie chart. And just in some, just in some basic um, headline figures, so you don't get the breakdown, and that's why I guess I'm not, I'm not using that. They've uh, only started with um, the government spending side of things, and I would like to expand it to revenue at some point, and I'll, I know, when the information's available. I reckon I've seen two or three stories in uh, the media over the last few months based on this data, and I'm guessing on your work. Have media organisations been giving you any support and Patreon or um, anything it, like that? Originally, when, when we first launched, that was when, with the first project, which only had the budget data in it and nothing else. Um, there was media interest then, but I couldn't really get it off the ground, so it kind of disappeared. I haven't really even had time this time around. I only launched this a week ago, so uh, in its... Well, mate, the original prototype only had one year, so to, to do all the, the to do to make it up to date, then I have to go and get all that data, and um, and build something new that you can query from different years as well. It's a very complex, um, very complex project to design, and one of my main um, challenges is actually trying to keep it simple because while people want more data sets in, and that makes it more powerful, and I want it there too, it's also then becomes more difficult to use. So then people. Um, kind of can get lost when they're using it. So I've had to really focus on trying to make it as simple as possible. Um, so does that answer your question? So this time around media. So yeah, I haven't even, I haven't really had time to think about that. Um, maybe, maybe soon I'll um, have a rest first and then I'll um, 
or a bit in the middle. Where is he, Heb? Oh. Just, um, to... Sorry, Luke's got the microphone, um, so I'll... I was just going to ask Rosie, have, have, you, um, have you looked at this or is it even, is it possible, I don't know how broken down it is, to look at how much money the government spends on proprietary software? Like what are the... Yeah, you can, like, I've, I've done that an search. Sorry, I yeah. thought about demoing it for today and then I forgot. So, um, yeah, so you can put, you don't get, uh, you get a result on open source and it's from tenders mainly. And, but, uh, and also Red Hat, Red Hat's a better one though. So if you put in Red Hat, you can get, you can see all the tenders um, that are, uh, that match that criteria. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I didn't, I've, you know, I've just created, I wanted to keep it fairly simple. So, the presentation itself, but, you know, if people go and use the site. Uh, have you had user feedback? Yeah. So, I'm on Twitter and I've got a fairly big Twitter community that I've been kind of building since I started, started doing this. So, there were people who are interested in uh, financial transparency and political transparency. And I've had a lot of user feedback, which is why I've been very careful about, um, about staging what I'm doing, because I, you know, I could just get it finished and it's a big project. And then I've had, and I have people are helping me uh, debug it because it says so much code. Um, I really wanted it to get to, to launch before, um, before today so that people would get a look at it rather than waiting until it's absolutely perfect. So, because there's already so much there. Yeah, so I've had a lot of feedback from Twitter. Oh. Is your own code open source? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the um, prototype is, I haven't quite done this yet. There's so much code there because there's so much going on that I'm even having trouble finding the bit that I'm looking for to fix the bug in. So the first thing I'll be doing is simplifying it and trying to make it easier for, for um, the code easier to use before I put it up because right now I don't think it would be, there'd be much point in putting it up because even I have trouble with it because there's, there's a lot, lot going on. So, yeah, so I've just been like really working quite hard because to get, just to get to this point. Oh, one more. Uh, maybe this is a bit meta. Um, is is the data like you're putting your data into a MySQL? Is that data available to third parties to draw graphs or? Well, it's all or? open data, so it's all published. And I've I've got the, there's a link to data at the top. Yeah. So. Um, so. In the menu, um, so this page gives details of the data sets. I haven't actually built something so people can download each of the data sets yet. I'm not sure, I was waiting to test to see how the server, which I've you know, got to support on Newstart basically, copes with, with yeah. the site itself before deciding and, and coding more to allow people to export it, because I'll have to write all that code as well, so. Yep. Fair yeah. enough, thank so. you. I'm finding it a bit mind-boggling, but do you still have to feed the Excel files or the PDFs into your data set? Um, no, because they now produce the uh, line item CSV and they do that every year and I hope they continue to do that. The, one, of the thing, one of the things with open data is that just because the government publishes something one year, it doesn't mean that they're going to publish it the next year. It doesn't, and a lot of the, one of the problems I had with this, like with the ACNC data, that's a fairly new data set and they've just gotten the, the charities in Australia and there's over 50,000 charities to report in this way. So they're kind of changing the schema every, every year. They will add a question or delete a question. And so when you're dealing with um, data sets from multiple years, even if it's the same data set, you've often got to do a lot of work um, to uh, make the schemas identical before you can use it. So, um, so what was the question? Yeah, you have to do a lot of work to it first. I mean, yeah, I have to put, um, for example, I also have to put um, uh, electric in all of the data sets so that they can be queried on electric. So I have to um, use what information is in there, the postcodes to uh, to apply electrics to them. 
Um, there's a whole, I have to clean all the data. You can't just use it the way it is. There's often a lot of issues with it. It's an interesting thing about administrative, administrative data is that it isn't collected with the intention of making it open. It's actually collected, administrative data is, is generated because uh, we're dealing with government. So they haven't built their systems over the years with the intention that the, this data set is going to be then made open to the public. It's just for their own use, really. So um, it's not like research data. Research data, for example, um, is collected for a, sp uh, for a specific use and for, for research and for working, you know, not for ad administrative purposes. So, so there's a lot of quality issues with administrative data that you have to deal with. So you do have to do stuff with them, yeah. I do it, I do everything, yeah. Although I did get some help with tenders data this year. Uh, what would you suggest, uh, like I've just had a look at a couple of things on the web, on your website and the descriptions, even no matter how far down you drill, are still very broad, like administering, yes. administrative, I yeah, so I, I, expenses and it says $1.3 billion. So if I wanted to know more information to get a breakdown of that, what would I do? Um, yeah, so I lobby the government to try to get them to put um, information that people want and obviously the more descriptive the better into, into these um, data sets so that we can use it. So these are the budget data is based on um, portfolio budget statements and they have a bit more information in them. So they have like notes and the notes are actually usually really interesting. So they're footnotes, so there will be a table and, and it will have a footnote which will say linked programs with other portfolios it will, or if there's anything interesting about it, it'll be in the footnote, but they don't put the footnotes in the line item CSV. So I would, no, I would have to do that myself. And um, you know, um, I mean, if people want me to, I can, but it's a lot of work and I um, don't generally get paid. Hey. Is there some way that we can push back the government to um, agree up themselves so they will publish X at a given time and, pub and, sit and agree what they're going to do and the format and the schema to make this kind of thing easier? Because there's value ought to all of us to have this data available and open. And it'd be a lot easier if they agreed. So I'm having trouble actually hearing what you're saying. Sorry, I'll try to speak up a little bit. Um, is there a way we can push back to the government to agree on legislation, what they will produce and when, and describe the scheme that comes out so that it's available and that we can all use this rather than depend upon a person to like make sense of it after the fact? Because if we would agree upon this, then like yeah, it would so really facilitate the process. Open data is a fairly new thing, even in Australia, and it's really only in the last few years that, that the government's really been uh, making some kind of commitment to producing um, producing data sets. And um, so there's a, data, there's a policy that says that all, um, all uh, data has to be made public, but there's no real, like there's no punishment or anything like that to an agency if they don't actually do that or if they don't follow the, the um, schema um, perfectly. And so like the grant starter are all supposed to have, um, Commonwealth grant starter, they're supposed to include an ABN in that data that's in the specification in the, um, but they don't actually do that often. And there's no, there's no kind of um, consequences for them for not doing that. So now, now though, now they've got that new system in, which is only from, uh, from, from January this, this year, I think they probably will have to follow the, follow the um, specification more closely to, as it's all on one, one site now. So um, it's a slow moving thing basically. But projects like this actually, um, sorry, projects like this push that along though, because that, that actually allows people to see it. Because if there's no, no one using the data, then nobody gets to see it and nobody has an opinion on it, so. Um, how, how can we help in your, your dream, dream okay. world from this? So like, we can give you money, we can contribute code, like, yeah. So um, yeah. So I mean, financial support is a is a major issue for me. So um, I haven't really been able to get funding for it. Um, and there's a lot of uh, if you think about it, issues about whether or not it should be independent of government. So and I'm not somebody who can go for government funding anyway because you have to be a, a registered charity, and that's you know I mean Open Australia went through that process a few years ago, and it's um you know not easy just for one person to do. So. Um, um, when it, when it goes, I did actually get some help with um, with 
the tenders data a few weeks ago in the lead up. And that was interesting because it was just two guys on Twitter. I'd never met them before. They hadn't even seen what I was doing. Um, but they kind of, um, but they, but they saw what I was saying about the government data on Twitter and um, they had some skills and they, um, they, they helped with that. So this time around, I think it's, what's different is that I've got a much bigger network than, than I had originally. And um, so hopefully now I'll be able to get the kinds of support that I need. So going forward, initially um, I'm looking at hopefully getting some extra um, donors and, um, and I'll be putting the code up eventually and I guess we can talk, so. I'm on Twitter. Yeah, it's the best place, everyone else does. Yeah, the I'll big put, donate yeah, so button. How many times have I been told, why don't you have a donate button at the top of your site? So I do now. So yeah, so I was really interested in what Luke had to say and I was you know, taking mental notes about because you, you've obviously worked with worked with people, whereas with code, whereas I haven't. So I was actually, um, you know, obviously listening to that, because that, you know now it might become some, my project might become something that people do, you know, will be working with. So. Yeah. Do we have anybody else? Any other questions? I'm sure, Rosie, you're with us for the rest of the week, are you? Yes. Yes. So if you do have any other questions, anything you want to talk to Rosie about, then uh, find her and so, or find her on Twitter. But on behalf of the wonderful people who are running this conference, I have a small gift for you to so say thank you for all your time and effort into putting this thank for you. us. Thank you. Uh, before everyone disappears, we've got a wee announcement for you. Please don't forget that um, session chairs are needed, so please sign up if you're interested. <laughs> Is that it? Okay. It's worthwhile and it's fun to so volunteer to be a session chair. Otherwise, I'm doing it all and I've got... <laughs> and that's not fair. <laughs>